So some of you may know this, but uh, public health is a very important thing for me. Uh, it's something I talk about frequently on uh, all the shows that I go on. And um, a lot of people are, no, a lot of people are misled into incorrectly believing that certain things are bad for you over others. And it turns out that there is a serious reason for that. Uh, so according to a new study published in the JAMA Internal Medicine, uh, that, uh, back in 1967, the sugar lobby wanted to kind of shift the public uh, opinion away from uh, the hazards of sugar and kind of shift the blame over to fat instead, which is why uh, you see a lot of low-fat foods. You don't really necessarily see a lot of low-sugar foods. You, there's, no, there's never any, like, low-sugar foods out there. There's yeah. diet. There's diet and light soda. There there's diet sodas. And this is one of those reasons. Now, uh, Katie Couric is actually really into this subject, and she made yeah. a whole documentary about it. It's really informative. She's a badass bitch. Yeah, no, seriously. It's really informative about how fat is not necessarily as bad for you uh, as is sugar, and it's the leading cause of, all, of loads of health issues that Americans face nowadays. Especially. And that's because our sugar consumption has increased tremendously since the 60s. Especially processed sugar. Yeah, processed sugar. Yeah, of course, sugar is still important. Like, carbs is still an important, necessary mm. part of your diet. However, the sugary foods, I mean, sugar is in everything now. And a big part of that has to do with the sugar lobby. Now, back in 1967, in the New England Journal of Medicine, there was um, an SRF-sponsored uh, research that wasn't disclosed that it was sponsored, published, said that uh, fat was worse than sugar. Basically, um, and so for the past five decades after that, the sugar industry was attempting to influence the scientific debate over the relative risks of sugar versus fat. This, this happened because in the 60s, people were starting to become aware of the dietary risks of consuming a lot of sugar. Mm. What do you think about this, Grace? You know, Hassan, Is this breaking news to you? Never been a fan of conspiracies, which is a lie because I am a fan of conspiracies, you but are. not this conspiracy. This rubs me the wrong way. I don't like conspiracies that are about misinformation. The only conspiracies I like are ones about political assassinations. So, yeah, I didn't like this story at all. But I have to say, not surprised, because in the study, it really does, you know, it all links up. You know, we were, you were mentioning low-fat foods, the prevalence of low-fat foods as opposed to low-sugar foods, or just the just saying it on a box of the food that we buy at the grocery store, you know, you see low-fat more than you see low-sugar. And I, what I liked about uh, this study is that it really mapped out, okay, this happened, and here are the repercussions that we are still existing with that a yeah. lot of people didn't know were a direct result of the sugar industry so, sponsoring yeah. this study. So some of the things uh, that, I mean, some of the... Uh, causes of sugar is that it because it increases uh, triglycerides in your blood it can um, clog up your artery walls which can lead to a uh, higher risk of stroke heart attack and heart disease so and these are really common killers in America specifically yes and when you look at the obesity rates worldwide and you compare it to American I mean uh, when you look at sugar consumption worldwide it kind of adds up Mm -hmm. uh, countries like America, which is number one, and Mexico, number two, they have the highest uh, consumption of sugar. As far as Western industrialized nations, America still has the highest when mm -hmm. you compare it, because then after the top two, it goes into other countries mm -hmm. uh, that you would expect, where there isn't necessarily a lot of education over public health and dietary habits. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they downplayed the role of sugar in heart disease, and it was god-awful, but this isn't something that's new. I mean, tobacco did this. Like, a lot of a lot of lobbying firms, is, uh, they, if, if they can get away with um, crafting studies in a certain way, they'll do it. And they have done it. Uh, I mean, uh, there are ads from the 40s and 50s and 60s where you see uh, this doctor likes to enjoy leisurely breaks. And because he's a doctor, he enjoys his favorite camel cigarette. Like It's they like doctors endorsing, doctors endorsing certain brands of cigarettes mm. as healthy. Uh, and, you know, now we have more transparency laws and regulations around uh, disclosing exactly where your studies have been funded. But this isn't new. Like, all, most think tanks that you see out there that publish these sort of uh, research papers are usually backed by uh, private corporations or lobbying firms, mm -hmm. like in the case of the sugar lobby.
Yeah, I, I think it, it, what unsettles me about this story is I think we know, but rarely are we able to peek behind the curtain of the influence of money and lobbies in politics and how that trickles down directly to the information that we are being fed as just uh, citizens. So I think that that's what really didn't sit well with me, but unfortunately, you know, not too surprised. I, I like the reference that you brought up about how um, the old ads for cigarettes, because those always cracked me up. That Marlboro, Mar Marlboro. Marlboro. How do people, that's a hard name. Isn't that a hard Marlboro? name to say? Marlboro? Marlboro. Marlboro. Marlboro man on a horse. Come on, the like guy if, who I died were, of, if I was chain smoking Marlboro. You know the story of the Marlboro man, right? He died? Lung cancer. He was he a real he was a real guy? What yeah. was his name? Yeah, no, I mean Well I was gonna say it's gotta be hard to get up on a horse if you're chain smoking cigarettes all day. Also, well, yeah, where do you put the he, ashtray? On the horse or just on the ground? Because that indicates that you're not actually really big into the environment like we would think because you're riding I don't a horse think anyone, everywhere. No, I don't think they were trying to say his like his carbon footprint was back low. In the 50s, they weren't trying to sell like a green person. They were trying to sell the idea of a, a maverick, man. maverick cowboy lifestyle. Let me tell you something interesting about Marlboro Man. Actually, in you know China, oh. in China, they switched the Marlboro Man from a cowboy to more of a, like a a better dressed man who was never on a horse because in Asian cultures, people that um, people that did uh, you know lay work like that like were commoners and not necessarily something that people were interested in. This is just a little tidbit about international marketing. I think it's interesting that different cultures have different perspectives on certain things. Anyway. I can't believe the Marlboro man died of lung cancer. What yeah. was his name? I don't remember. You know like how Wendy's had Dave, and Dave was their guy, and then Dave died, and you Remember really how sad, Subway had Jared, and then Jared raped little children? Because that's what Subway does for you. Why would you do that? Anyway. All right, guys, we want to know what you think. Um, look, there's a lot. Before before I get wrapped up, I just want to say one last thing. Okay. Okay. Is it the name of the Marlboro Man? No, it's not. Okay. Do your own. No, it's do your own research when it comes to diets. Okay. When it comes to everyone can maintain a healthy lifestyle as long as you track your calories, as long as you figure out what your protein consumption is, and it's possible. Believe in yourself. No, seriously. Uh, don't be like Grace. Don't eat a lot of Taco Bell late night. Um, we want to hear what you guys think. Uh, is this expected? Do you think that it was due to the transparency laws uh, uh, not allowing, not really preventing them from disclosing uh, exactly where the research was being funded from? Uh, leave us your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm Hassan Piker, this is Grace Baldrige, and we'll see you next time on Pop Trigger.